Let's look at our second example. This example is the same thing. Instead of giving us a source code for the web page, it's actually taking a screenshot. In this case, we're going to give it again, google.com. It's going to come back and say, hey, here's your screenshot. This is what it looks like. We see it's opening up Google. But this time in the first example, I used my personal server. I had it give me the request. But for this case, we're going to use Burb Suite. Again, if you want to do this, you will need Burb Suite Pro. Uh, you can actually use a collaborator to see if there is any uh, request being made server side or if it's being made on the uh, client side. What we're going to do here is we're going to look for our Burb Collaborate client. It's going to give us a URL. We go copy clipboard. This gives us a URL. This is very helpful if you don't want to spin up your own server just to verify if a request is being created by the server or if by it's being by your browser. You can use Burb Suite. It gives you a URL. And as soon as you hit go and you click pull now, if there is a request made, it's going to come back and say, hey, here's uh, the request that was made on my end. So let's do it one more time. I'm going to say HTTP. I'm going to do this. It says screenshots ready. This matches the URL we had. We do pull now. And we can see there was a request that was made by HTTP from the IP address. This is the server's IP address, not my personal IP address. So this is the machine where the application is being hosted on. That's the IP for it. And it indicates that it's making requests on the server side. So there's a chance of SSRF depending on what we do. So what we can do here is we can type in our usual command. We can go in here and say, hey, I want you to, excuse me, not our command. We want to type in our usual uh, guesses. We always start with a local file. You can do file Etsy password. I'm going to give this a try. And as expected, because there are no defenses made against an SSRF, the application comes back and says, hey, here is the content of the file that you want to look for with the file wrapper. And it puts it in a screenshot. We can also do this again with the metadata URL. So again, this comes to this comes by default by most cloud providers, uh, AWS, Azure, Google, and DigitalOcean all have it. The URL, the IP address is always the same, but the naming conventions of the API endpoints are different. So you might have to look at them for each one. You have to see where this is hosted and then send this, uh, look at the documentation and follow it and look for this metadata. So for DigitalOcean, I know that they use metadata v1. We're going to give it a go look at our screenshot and it comes back. And if I were to go to this IP address right now, it wouldn't work because this is IP address that is used in a private network and it's not accessible unless you have it within your network as well. So we proved that there is some sort of a local file read. We can read, you know, files that are hosted locally on that machine, or we can also look for metadata. And if there is any other IP addresses like localhost, you can either do HTTP localhost or you can do 127.0.0.1, which is the same notation for a local host machine. Uh, and it's if we have access to it, it's going to give us a screenshot. And as expected, it came back as status okay. Same as our first example. This is the result we got. It gave us the same thing.